What's up you guys, Mike Lazarecki here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a simple logo animation in Adobe After Effects, and then export that animation using an alpha chain. Let's get into it. So just to give you guys an idea, the process we're gonna go through today is actually super useful if you are somebody like me who makes frequent content and wants to have an animation that you can throw up on the screen real easy and have a transparent background. So the really important part about what we're talking about today is exporting this animation utilizing an alpha channel. Now, if you don't know what an alpha channel is, let's talk about the way digital imaging works real quick. Pretty much all digital art, including digital imaging of any kind that includes video, are all going to work in a three channel color space, basically known as RGB color space. Now the three channels that I'm talking about here are obviously red, green, and blue. And then the way you end up getting your image is basically your camera or your software interpolates the brightness levels of those different colors per pixel and mixes them all together and then you get your image, okay? So that's your standard RGB color space. Now in certain software applications, you can also add what's called an alpha channel. This becomes kind of like a fourth channel and what this channel controls is the transparency of different elements. Generally speaking, the alpha channel is designed to control the transparency of your background. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing here. We're gonna create a simple logo animation on a black background and when we export it, I'm gonna show you how to export it including an alpha channel, and that will allow your logo animation to sit over top of other footage with a transparent background so the other footage can be seen around your logo. It's kind of cool. So just as a quick example, this is actually the exact same exporting process that I used when I was exporting the finished version of my new intro for this channel, which is what allows the beginning and end of that intro to sort of appear like it's partially over top of the footage and then the footage fades out and then fades back in and you can still sort of see the animation happening over top. If I hadn't used an alpha channel, that wouldn't be possible. You wouldn't be able to see the footage underneath the animation. So another excellent use for this process is actually to create lower thirds just like this one. And this is actually used frequently in documentary filmmaking and newscasting. Anyway, enough talking. Let's get over into the computer so I can show you how this all works. All right, so here we are in After Effects and I'm gonna go ahead and open up this project called Demo Alpha. And as you can see here, I've got my little signature logo that I put together. And in this project, I basically have a very simple animation. What we have here is it kind of flies in to frame, bounces a little bit, and then rolls out of frame, okay? So if we play this back in real time, we're gonna see it come in and roll away. Now we can preview what this would look like with an alpha channel if we click on the setting to toggle the transparency grid. That is located right down here between your preview resolution and your active camera. If you click this where it's got the little checkerboard, you can see toggle transparency grid. If you click that, it will show you the parts of the clip that will render with an alpha channel. So real quick, let me show you how I did this animation and then we can move on to the exporting portion. So I'm gonna come up here, create a new composition and we'll just call this comp two, okay? Now we've got nothing in here. We can toggle this back off because right now it doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna bring in another logo, which is basically the same one with just a little bit different format. So I'm gonna bring this guy in. And we can see that it came in way too large. So what I can do now is go in and select my layer, hit S, that'll bring up scale. And I think I'm gonna bring this guy down to about 25%. Okay, now this is the size that I want it to be when it's sort of like finished animating in, okay? So what I wanna do here is I wanna actually have it animate from zero to 25%. We're going to go forward by about four frames and then we're gonna hit our stopwatch. So that's going to initiate keyframes. Then we're gonna bring our scale percentage down to zero. Now we're gonna move forward three more frames and we're gonna raise this up to 28%, three more frames, and back down to 25%, okay? So what that will do is allow us to have kind of a little bit of a bounce to our animation, okay? You can see that it sort of comes in a little bit too much and then sort of settles right back down. 
So in the case of this specific animation, I want this logo to be visible on screen for about two and a half seconds or so. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and set that up. So now I'm gonna move my playhead over to about the three second mark. And I think this time, rather than rolling off screen, I think I'm just going to have it scale itself back down again, but we'll have it bounce real big and then scale down to nothing this time. So at this specific keyframe, we still want it to be at its 25% size. So we're gonna click on this little diamond over here in order to put another keyframe in, keeping it at that size. Otherwise, if I start to reduce its size now, it's going to change over time throughout the entire time that it's on screen. We only want it to animate at the very beginning and at the very end. So now I'm gonna move three frames forward and I'm gonna go up to 45%. And then I'm gonna move three more frames forward and we're gonna go down to 0%. Okay, now let's watch this animation back and see what we think. Okay, simple enough. Add a little motion blur onto that and I think we've got ourselves a winner of a super simple animation anyway. So now that we have this simple animation done, now we can move on to exporting it with an alpha channel. And to kind of simplify the process, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually shorten the composition length so that the computer's not trying to export more than it really needs to. So I'm gonna go up here to composition, composition settings, and in the duration slot here where it says 30 seconds, let's change that to four seconds. And hit okay. And now you can see we have our beginning keyframes here and our ending keyframes here, and we're pretty much good to go. So if we wanna finesse this animation a little bit, we can go in here and select our keyframes where we come out of the animation. We can easy ease out, and then maybe ease in on this one here, and that will change it to look a little bit more like this. And it just kinda of smoothens things up a little bit. You can do that if you want to. You don't necessarily have to. It's all kind of personal preference at that point. So once you're happy with your animation, now we can move on to exporting the final product. So make sure that your composition is selected down here and then go up to File, Export, Add to Render Queue. Once you've done that, you'll see this little Render Queue section come up down here. So once we have this Render Queue tab open, we can click on the settings that say Best Settings right now, and we wanna go into this and make sure that all these settings are the way we want them to be. Currently it is set to 1920 by 1080, so we got 1080p, that's fine for this project. But one of the things I wanna make sure I point out, you should always make sure that you're exporting this in the right frame rate for what you intend to use it with. So right now it's set to 29.97. Usually I do most of my editing in 23.976 because it's a little closer to that natural 24 frames a second cinema type frame rate. So what I wanna do is select this frame rate down here and specify which frame rate and I'm gonna put in 23.976 and click OK. And then I want to go into output module, click on that and I wanna change my output to QuickTime, and I wanna change right here where it says video output, and I wanna change that from RGB to RGB plus alpha. This will allow us to export that transparent background. Now we can go ahead and click OK, and all we need to do now is specify our file name and where we wanna save it. So in this case, what I'll do is save it to my documents, and we'll just call this logo animation tutorial, click save, and hit render. We're gonna let that render out, and now that that's rendered out, you have an animation like this. So there you guys go, a simple logo animation with a transparent background. When we export this with that alpha channel, it makes it so that we have a pre-baked animation that we can use in any of our editing softwares, whether it be Premiere, Resolve, if you're a Final Cut Pro user. If you just drag that footage into your timeline, it will already have a transparent background and you can just place it over top of your footage and it'll animate out all by itself. This really does save all kinds of time. That way you don't have to keyframe new animations for every video that you're making. You just have one already created animation clip that you drag in at that moment that you need it in your edit 
and you're good to go. It's all about working efficiently, right? So as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button, consider subscribing, and uh, yeah, make yourself some logo animations with some transparent backgrounds, and I will see you in the next video. Later.